This video is made possible by the following mad lads. All their awesome gear they've supplied to me can be checked out in the description below. Hey guys, less interesting version of Chris Harris boy here, and welcome back to Dirt Rally 2.0 for another video. In today's video, I'm going to be pairing together what I think is the most difficult car to drive in Dirt Rally 2.0 and the most difficult stage. For the stage, I'm going to be heading to the newly released Monte Carlo. And the reason why I gave you the air quotes is because these are essentially just the same stages that came from the first Dirt Rally title, albeit with some slightly upgraded graphics and slightly different physics. So basically, if you were hoping this DLC would bring something completely new to the Dirt Rally franchise, uh, you're going to be disappointed. And rightly so, in my opinion. Here is the specific stage that we are going to be driving, the Pratt. De la stage? Pratella? I am not French, as it's now becoming painfully obvious. Uh, and the reason why I picked this stage is because it's a good mix of tarmac into ice into snow. So you have proper mixed surface conditions on this stage, which makes driving the car that we've chosen very tricky indeed. And this is that car, the Porsche 911 RGT rear engine, meaning that this thing is going to be trying to rotate whether I want it to or not. Coupled with the fact that it has 425 brake horsepower means that once we get to the ice and to the snow section of this stage, uh, tail happy will be an understatement, I think. It's going to be absolute hell to drive, but I'm looking forward to it. I, I like a challenge. And just before I go crash this rather nice Porsche over the side of a mountain, I want to say a big thank you to Abritzi, who are a new sponsor to this channel. They specialise in sim racing and karting boots and even sent me over a pair to try, and I've been very much enjoying them so far. If you fancy getting yourself a pair, they've been very kind and offered me a 20% discount code for you guys. It's in the description. Check it if you want. If you don't, no worries. Right then, so here we are inside our Porsche 911 RGT rally car. Gotta say, that doesn't get old saying that. Now we have lots of ice and snow waiting to make our acquaintance a bit further up the stage. So uh, let's go meet it, shall we? Handbrake on, build the revs, enjoy the very nice noise from that six cylinder engine. And away we go, sequential manual gearbox down to my right hand side here, which means I haven't got to use the clutch on upshift or on downshift. And hopefully means I haven't got to use the clutch actually at all on this, unless I want to have a cheeky clutch kick at some point. But as you can probably see, I'm not really going to need it. This car is very much capable of sliding itself on throttle without the clutch's help. 425 horsepower. Delivered to the rear wheels means that this car is always looking for an excuse to spin and when you couple that with the slidey physics of the Dirt Rally 2.0 tarmac, you'll met a thing that very rarely strays, stays in a straight line. Look, cars on your left, wall on your right and sheer drop if you get it wrong. So really, driving this stage is all about controlled aggression, which is difficult when you have a car that uh, is capable of probably doing about 180 miles an hour. Uh, if it was given enough road. Easy through this bit here, and the last first bit of ice. Fell the car, just start to pull through there. Something that I wanted to talk about before we get into the real tricky stuff is that it may be a, a placebo effect, I don't really know, but I kind of feel like the tarmac feels a little bit different in the steering. And especially when you couple that with the ice here, there's a definite loss of grip when you when you hit a patch of ice, and you feel that in the wheel. The force back still has a ways to go, and I'm not sure we're ever going to get there with this title, to be honest. But it feels different from the last force, uh, the last update before. So maybe maybe I'm imagining that. But let me know if you've noticed that difference as well. Maybe it's just me. Force back is pretty subjective after all. There you go. Have to be. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes off when you get on the power, which is kind of a scary thing. Because I'm having to really resign myself to second to fourth gear, nothing really in between that. I don't want to go much faster, because if I hit a patch of ice at any sort of speed, there's not much I can do to stop it. You tend to just become a passenger and head to the nearest wall. Speaking of ice, there it is. Bit of ice here. <laughs> now we are on the winter tyre, you do get a choice between the winter and the softer tyre. Uh, the winter tyre, as you probably guess, is made for both tarmac and ice, whereas the soft tyre is more geared towards tarmac, and the tarmac tyre is fantastic at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> but you get onto stuff like this, and it becomes very scary, you have to break after the ice, 
Trying to avoid this patch on the inside because that would just send me six into the barrier. Into six right to the crest. 50. I mean, hopefully you guys are... <laughs> hopefully you guys are getting across how slippy it is on the ice from this video. Oh god, oh god, I'm gonna miss that. Tarmac say me, thank you. There you go. But this is proper, a proper good mixed surface, this. Do you feel when the, the, the car monum, uh, monum, uh, word, momentarily grips between the ice patches? And then also, well, I say feel, the wheel goes light when you hit the ice and you're just hoping you're pointing in the right direction on the way in. Which means as we get further and further up the stage, I'm having to be more and more careful. This thing's rear engined. Uh, engine's right at the back of the car, so if you start rotating, you don't really stop. Uh, which isn't really ideal when you have a, a cliff face to the left of you and uh, people to the right. Being so soft through there. On the power. Probably shouldn't be as enthusiastic on the power as I was there, but hey ho. Trying to be gentle, but at the same time quick. As I say, controlled aggression is your best bet through here. Oh man, the ice, the ice, the ice, a bit of ice there. The rear wheels just caught it. Just caught it in the last section there. And it nearly stalled me. Oh god. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. Tree! Oh my, that was so, that was so lucky. I hit that tree in just the right way. But you see there, one moment of misjudgment, and I hit the ice, and I am my passenger. <laughs> I thought that was stage over. I mean, actually putting in a good time in this stage, I see being just intensely difficult. You, know, you might be wondering, Jimmy, why would a Group B car not be more difficult through here? And I'd say it'd be quite close, but the Group B car has something this thing does not, which is four-wheel drive. It's a very basic four-wheel drive, but that traction is worth a lot. Only having two-wheel drive in this thing really makes the experience more difficult. I'm having to really slow it down now. I'm just I'm just sliding on top now, just on top. Just skating around on top. And now we're getting to the proper icy sections. Where the thing is now going to become not undrivable, but we're going to lose a lot of speed that we've been used to on that tarmac. A lot of grip that we had before is now no longer there, hence why I'm being so careful up here. Last bit of tarmac. Gonna make the most of it. I hope I stop on this bit here. There you go. Snow and ice starts now. There you go. Snow and ice starts now. Five words you don't want to hear. I definitely wasn't counting the words there. <laughs> Easy. Easy. So trying to keep it in a high-ish gear. Car's rotating. Now I kind of struggle when ice driving. I, I find myself always putting a bit too much input. That's kind of just how I drive, I guess. Oh no, snowbank, snowbank, snowbank. That was almost going well until I hit the bank there. We were seeing how you have to balance the power. It's all about being smooth and easy. This has actually got an ice driving livery on it, this car, so maybe that's worse than grip, who knows. So you actually end up trying to use the power to push the car out of the corner a bit more. You're using it to steer as opposed to before where you, well, you know, you use power to steer a little bit even on tarmac, but here it's pretty much the entire thing. Less power equals less angle, more power equals more angle. So a little bit of a, a kick there to get it turning. Full lock left, there you go. But this, this is a lot of fun this. This feels like it could be believable. Again, just using the power there to push me a bit further because I was getting a bit too close to the inside of that snowbank there, so use the power to pull me out a bit. Oh, that's a rock there. Luckily I didn't break a wheel, really. I'll say that, I'm not sure you can really do that in a rally. Ah, this would be such a beautiful dance if I was better at this game, but now you're seeing why this is such a challenging stage, because the stage is two halves. It starts off being a tarmac stage, which is challenging in itself, especially at Monty, and then it turns into this, where 
You're just trying to find any, any little piece of grip. And it's just not there. You, you'd really want studded tyres for this part, but they would not gel with the tarmac. A bit close to that bank there again. Use the power to pull, pull it back out again. Coming to the end of the stage. On the way in. Oh, we're going to spin it over the line. <laughs> and that's how you finish. That's how you finish properly. My oh my, that car is is so tricky to drive on that on the higher part of the stage there, where you're just trying to trying to find, as I said, any little bit of grip when you're right on the ice and snow. It becomes just this penduluming beast, and any small incorrect input on the throttle will start spinning you around, and uh, that's why I think this combo is so difficult. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. That was very fun to do as you watched me slip and slide for the last part of the stage there. If you did enjoy it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe as well to be made notified of future streams and future videos. As always, let me know what kind of time you got on this stage. I'm sure you smashed me. That wasn't really a good run. Big thank you to my patrons and to my sponsors. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you all next time.